Hi there, and welcome to Position One Power Equipment. My name's Adrian, and today we're going to look at the P5100 SPE lawnmower. So I've removed all the packaging and laid the contents of the box out on the table so that you can see exactly what you get. First of all, we've got the mower unit itself with the upper handle connected with the three cables. Be very careful not to damage these cables when removing it from the box and when assembling it. So that's the mower unit itself. Moving on, we have the large grass collection basket. The mulching plug. The side discharge chute. And the battery box with the battery inside. Now, on the top of the battery box is an ignition switch and the keys for that switch are regularly inside the box here. So you just lift the orange lid and you will find the keys inside. Then it comes with the upper part of the handle or the lower part, the part that goes at the bottom, which is an individual part. You will see that there are four bolts, four washers, two nuts on the top and two orange plastic handles lower down. If any of these are missing, check in the bottom of your packaging carefully because they're only assembled very loosely for transport. Then we have the pull start cover, the two center handles, again these are a handle with a washer, a plastic washer and a nut and there are two of those. Again, if any of these parts are missing, simply look in the bottom of your packaging. They could have come loose and fallen to the bottom of the packaging, which is where you'll most likely find them if they're not there. Then it comes with a spark plug spanner, the battery charger for charging the battery. We shall go through that. And finally, a comprehensive user manual. Now, I do recommend that you read your manual thoroughly before attempting to assemble the lawnmower and certainly before running it. And that's the contents of your packaging. So let's start assembling your lawnmower. First of all, I'm going to take this upper handle up and out of the way for safekeeping, taking care not to trap any of the cables. There we are. So that's the upper handle out of the way. And I'm going to start by fitting the pull start cover. Now on the pull start cover you'll see that there's a series of barbs around the outside. There's two here, two in the middle and I believe there's two little ones at the front and quite simply if you put the pull start through the little slot here, tuck the back ones in to the corresponding slots in the top of the mower and then simply squeezing the sides in, working your way from the back towards the front just do this. You'll see the little holes that the tabs go in. One, two of them done, three, four, five, six. There we are. And it's simply by squeezing the sides in, the pull start cover just clicks into position over the top of the pull starter and allows the pull start handle to come out through the hole here. So that's fitting the pull starter cover. So moving on, we're going to fit the lower handle. Now when this is fitted here, we want the cables from the upper handle to pass over the top of the upper bar. So the simplest way to do this, I'll bring the upper handle back up and over and over to this side of the mower temporarily. And that's brought the three cables and the upper handle out of the way. So now I can go ahead and fit the lower handle in its position here. So what I'll need to do is to remove all the fastenings first of all and as I said these are only loose I'll just remove all the fastenings from the lower handle that's bolts, washers, two nuts, two plastic uh, hand wheels there we are and it's going to sit in this position here now if I take two of the bolts they're all the same and pass them through the lower square holes in the brackets on the mower. I'll simply place the lower hole 
over this bolt. Oop. Here we go. I can just find the hole. There we go. There we are, and I'll just let that sit down there for a moment. Now I can fit a washer and the plain hexagon nut there. So I'll do exactly the same on my side. A washer and the plain nut there. So that's a bolt in from the inside out, the handle on, the washer and the nut. And exactly the same on the other side of the mower. So a very similar story here. You'll see that there are a series of three squares all interlinked here in the top of the bracket. Now this allows for three different heights of operation, top, middle and bottom, depending on the height of the person operating it. So somebody very tall may want the top hole and somebody short may want the bottom. What I'll do is put it in the center hole just for the purposes of this. I'll just rotate the bolt until it comes through. And then again, on with the washer, just give it a bit of a squeeze so I've got enough threads to grab hold of, there we are, and on with the plastic knob. So I'll do exactly the same on my side, again finding the centre hole, lining up the square on the bolt with a square in the frame, on with the washer. And on with the plastic knob. So the next step will be to go around and tighten up the lower bolts and then we'll tighten the top bolts. So I'm simply going to use a 13mm spanner on the nut making sure that the bolt on the other side is located in its little square and just tighten up on the lower nut. Then I can tighten the hand wheel on the top no need to over tighten the lower nut and I'll do exactly the same on the other side there we go and tighten up the orange knob and that's the lower handle fitted so let's move on to fitting the upper handle to the lower handle so I'll take these two cab units with the washers, plastic washers and nuts and I'll just remove the nuts, washers, plastic washers from these before I start. Now I'm going to take the lower handle here and I'm going to bring the upper handle into position. Now very carefully I'm going to make sure that I don't trap any of the cables while I'm doing this. I'm just going to fit it over the outside line up the holes between the two I can see them, there they are and I'm going to put a handle with a plain washer on it from the outside in and through that hole so I'll just hold that there loosely and I'll do exactly the same on the other side I'll just line up the two holes so I want a handle with a washer from the outside in then on the inside, I'm going to take one of the plastic washers, putting the curved side towards the frame so that it picks up with the semicircle on the frame. I will give you a close up of this and just loosely fasten the nut. I'll do exactly the same on your side. On with the plastic washer and on with the nut. So I'll give you a picture of that or a clip of that as a close up. So that's the handle with the washer on it from the outside on, on with the curved side of the plastic washer towards the tube and then on with the nut. And I'll just put them finger tight to start with and we'll go through the adjustment of this next. Well, as you can see in its present state it doesn't really do anything as far as clamping the top and bottom handles. So I'm going to need to hold the nut on the inside and I'll maybe rotate that handle one turn holding the nut. Let's try it again on the cam. Still very floppy. 
I'll do another half a turn. Right, half a turn. And try it again. Perhaps another half a turn. And now I can feel resistance and it clamps the top handle and the bottom handle together. So I'll do exactly the same quickly on the other side. There we are. So that's the little cam handles fitted and adjusted and the handles are connected. So we're going to move on to fitting the battery box. Now on the back of the battery box you'll see there are four holes, two here, two here, with screws in them. Again if any of these screws are missing check carefully in the bottom of your packaging, Ch chances are because they're only put in, oh, as you can see I can undo them with my fingers very loosely so I need to undo these four screws. Now up in the handle here you'll see there's a tab on the inside just here and another tab here with four holes. The battery bo box simply locates in this position and just clicks down into its position there and it will locate fairly nicely. So our next step is to put the four screws back in from the back. So having located the battery box in position, I can simply screw in two screws either side. So that's two that side. Just do them loosely to start with. And then exactly the same on the other side, two more screws. And that's the battery box fitted. So our next step is going to be to tidy up these cables and connect the battery. Now all the cables are running over the top of this central bar, so I'll bring the cable from the battery box over the top of this central bar as well, ready for its connection here. And we shall show you that first. So here on the rear right hand side of the engine is the connection for the battery. If I bring the battery lead down, it'll only go on one way as you can see. And these can be quite tight. I can just connect the two battery terminals together and that's the battery connected. So now to move on to tidying these cables. So first of all, the cables are tidied by the use of these, let me just pull them off, semi-circular plastic clips. Now, they're designed so that more than one cable can go through each one. So I'll put one there and then coming lower down we'll have another one perhaps there. So two on the left hand side, a couple of inches up, a couple of inches down below the adjuster and then there's another one here somewhere around the centre here, we'll tidy that one up. Now, the battery cable will actually go through these clips, but we do provide a couple of cable ties for connecting the battery cable somewhere here and somewhere here. So I shall show you those. They are in the little toolkit with the spark plug spanner. So you just simply use the cable tie and you can bring the cable into it as well. So one at the top there, and one down the bottom, just to keep the battery cable secure. So that's the cables tidied, and I will snip these off with a pair of scissors. So moving on, we need to fill the engine oil in the engine of your lawnmower. Now it's imperative that you put engine oil in the engine as it ships to you with no oil in it. And should you run it with no oil in it, the engine will blow up very quickly indeed. So the oil is filled through the filler plug here. Simply rotate it anti-clockwise and it can be withdrawn from the tube. Now this doubles up, there is a dipstick to let you know when you've got the correct quantity and it is also the point at which you can remove engine oil by starting the engine, getting it warm, and you can tip it over and pour it back out of this tube as well. We shall go through that at a later date in a service video. 
So the oil we recommend is a 1540 grade semi-synthetic motor oil. So gradually pour oil down through the filler tube until it reaches the correct spot on the dipstick. Just go a couple of hundred mil at a time to start with and allow it time to drain down the tube and into the engine before dipping it. Now on the dipstick at the bottom you will see there is a minimum, it says MIN minimum, then there is a cross hatched area and then max, the word maximum, MAX on the top. You want to make sure that the engine oil reaches at least the level of the bottom of the word maximum. And to dip it, simply place the dipstick back on and remove it. There's no need to screw it in. So place it in the hole and remove it when you're checking the oil level. So keep filling it up gradually and allow it to come up to just below the maximum mark. Once you've filled it, you can replace the dipstick, screw it in clockwise and just make sure that it's firmly closed. And that's filling the engine oil. So let's move on to filling the engine with petrol. Now the fuel cap is here on the rear left hand side of the engine from the operator position. And simply you can unscrew anti-clockwise the filler cap. Now, a couple of little safety things. Never fill the fuel tank when the engine is hot. Certainly not with the engine running, but not when the engine is hot either because it would be a fire risk should you spill it on the hot exhaust. If you do have a slight spill, give it a good wipe up and allow any residual fuel time to evaporate before restarting the engine. Okay, so you're using fresh unleaded petrol, fill the fuel tank until it gets to within around 25 millimeters of the top of the filler neck. Never fill it right to the top to allow room for expansion of the fuel. So fill it up to within 25 millimeters or an inch of the top of the filler neck. Once you've done that, back on with the fuel cap and just make sure it's tight. So that's the engine filled with petrol. So the final little operation is to put the pull start handle up in the little pigtail here so that it's convenient for use should you have a flat battery. So I'll pull out on the pull starter, giving myself maybe six inches spare to play with and wrap it around the pigtail and locate it there. I'll give you a close up of how this fits. So first we need to charge the mower's battery using the charger provided. And as you can see here it says charge battery for 5 hours with main charger before first use. So firstly fit the little jack plug in the hole in the top just like a mobile phone charger and then plug the charger into a 13 amp wall outlet. Once the battery is charged simply remove the charger. The mower doesn't charge its own battery so maybe every five or six uses of the lawnmower you may need to recharge the battery to keep it topped up and again after long periods of disuse you may need to charge the battery as well so that's how to charge your battery so we've fully assembled our lawnmower we've added engine oil we've added petrol we've fully charged the battery so now let's talk about the controls now up in the operating position here we have three handles the OPC handle, Operator Present Control, which is basically an on-off switch for the engine. The engine will only start when this handle is back, so it needs to be pulled at all times when the engine is running. And if you release it, it will switch the engine off. So that's Operator Present Control. The operator has to be present up here, and it controls the engine. So that's the OPC on the front. The rear handle here is to engage the drive. So once your engine's running, you're pulling the front handle. If you pull on the rear handle, it will engage the clutch down in the gearbox here, engage the drive and off the lawnmower will go. To disengage the drive, let go of the rear handle and to stop the mower, let go of the front handle. So here we have the throttle. Now, to start the engine, push the throttle fully forward. We'll go down and I'll show you the primer bulb because the engine needs to be primed before you start it, especially when it's cold. So the primer bulb is here on the front of the engine. Now, when you've only just filled it with fuel, you may need to push this three to five times. 
once you've started it the first time, it may only be like one to three times. But that's the primer bulb. If the engine's very hot and they've only just started it and switched it off to empty the basket, something like that, you probably won't need to push the primer bulb. So for cold starts especially, and for when it's run out of fuel and you're just starting it for the first time, three, four, five times, something like that. One to three times if it's a little bit warm. And of course, you probably won't need to push it at all if the engine's hot. So that's the primer bulb. So now that I've explained the controls, to start the lawnmower from cold, primer push three times on the primer, throttle forward, switch the engine on, and turn the key. I haven't got any fuel in this, by the way, so it won't start here in the studio. Once the engine has started, drop the throttle back just a little bit so that you're not running it at its maximum. It can be, you know, it's got no problem with being there, but you can drop it back just a little bit, probably be more economical on fuel. And then, to drive off, pull the rear handle. To stop the drive, release the rear handle, and at any time to stop the mower, simply release the front handle, the OPC handle. If the engine is warm, you won't need to press the primer bulb if you've been, you know, running the mower for half an hour or so. And again, pull back the OPC, start it on the key. Once the engine's running, drop back a bit, away to go. To stop the engine when it's warm, again, release the OPC handle. Should you have a flat battery, you can do exactly the same as you would with a non-electric start lawnmower. Again, for a cold start, primer bulb, pull the OPC handle, pull the throttle down, turn the key to position one, and pull start it in the conventional way using the pull starter. Again, once it's started, drop it back a little bit and release the handle. For a warm start, exactly the same, no primer bulb, exactly the same procedure. So that's how to start and stop your P1 PE lawnmower. This lawnmower is what we call a four-in-one lawnmower. So you can cut and collect grass, cut and drop grass, mulch or side discharge. So for mulching, you wouldn't use your grass collection basket. Simply pick up the rear cover and using the mulching plug, you'll see it has a handle here, slide it into the back of the mower until it clicks in position and release the flap. This would now be for mulching. For the side discharge, again, using the side discharge chute here, firstly you would fit the mulching plug and then we're going to open this cover. Just a word of warning, never open this cover when the engine is running and if you've just stopped the engine, allow time for the blades to stop before you lift this flap. So first of all, you lift a little tab on the top here, a little spring-loaded tab, and this flap will lift up simply. As you can see, this gives direct access to the rotating blades, so never lift it up when the blades are rotating. So you see two holes in the top of the chute. They simply fit over the two tabs here and release the flap. And that's for side discharge. Again, to remove it, lift the little flap on the top, lift up the flap, lift it out of the way, and close the flap. So for cut and drop, no side discharge chute, no mulching plug, and it'll do exactly what it is. It will cut, grass will come out of here, and drop in a line behind the mower. So that's cut and drop. Again, never lift this flap up with the engine running, or and wait for the blades to stop spinning, because again, it gives you direct access to the rotating blade. So the fourth and final mode of the lawnmower is cut and collect in the conventional manner using the basket. Now you will see on the basket that it has a hook on either side, one on the left, one on the right, and this hooks over these silver coloured springs here. So firstly, wait for the blade to stop, lift the flap up, hook the basket simply over the two springs and release the flap. And that's the basket fitted. To remove the basket, lift the flap and lift the basket out of the way. So that's cut and collect. So one more feature of your lawnmower is that it has a seven position single point height adjuster here. 
So simply by moving this handle and backwards and forwards, we can raise and lower the deck height and hence the grass length. So pull the handle away from the mower and right forward would be the lowest cutting height. And again, pull it away, up one notch, position two, three, four, five, six, and the highest position, seven, all from one convenient position. Well, I do hope you found this demonstration useful. For more information on this or any of our other products, visit www.p1pe.co.uk. I've been Adrian, and happy mowing.